We're heading out to Coronado for breakfast and a walk. Probably one of our favorite places to go for a walk. Right? At least it's mine. And one of the best acai bowls. You guys will see it right now. Cafe out here in Coronado, one of the best spots out here. What'd you order? Baba ganoush. Baba ganoush eggs. Acai bowl. Delicious. Coffee is really good. And a waffle. We're out here, Coronado. A lot of fun, a lot of good food. If you're in Coronado, try it. Pretty people. Pretty people. Pretty people. <laughs> here in Coronado again one of my favorite places here in San Diego um, it's a small little island if you don't know about Coronado it's a small little island right next to um, downtown and it's an amazing place you have golf courses you have amazing properties and homes out here home prices you know your average home price is around two million dollars especially now that home prices have gone up um, but these homes for example this one right uh, behind me just sold for I think like five or six million dollars again you're right in front of the golf course so that's a huge huge uh, premium to be out here but Coronado is again small island very outdoorsy people like to come out here and and ride their bikes and you have the beach you can go out there and surf you have Hotel Dell if you don't know uh, if you're not familiar with it it's uh, one of the oldest hotels here in San Diego it's uh, it's amazing it has great uh, restaurants bars um, breakfast area so it's uh, it's pretty awesome and me and my wife we come out here and just walk our, our baby and it's super peaceful very very safe very quiet and at the same time it's super nice to see um, it's really really nice actually to see these homes we see them go on the market we see them come off the market we see them get sold and uh, me as a realtor obviously would love to to break into Coronado. It's a very tough community to break into as a realtor, but eventually, you know, you can, everything can be done. It just takes time, it takes patience, it takes uh, consistency of um, of being out here, of uh, farming this area. So uh, check out this uh, like Spanish bungalow right behind me. So something that I've come across lately, which is the title of this uh, of this vlog is um, why the highest offer isn't necessarily the best offer and there's a couple of reasons for all this um, you know many home sellers right now they're looking for the highest and best offer but when it comes to getting your home sold it's not necessarily the highest and best that's the best offer and the reason being that um, the highest offer there's there's a lot of seller uh, a lot of buyers right now that just want to get their foot in the door once they're in escrow once you they get the offer accepted then they try and lower the price and there's many different ways of doing that there's one you could do it through uh, repairs so they can bill you a they can put together a long long list of repairs uh, meaning that they're probably gonna ask for a price reduction number two is no matter if they don't put an appraisal contingency no matter how high the the offer is if the home doesn't get appraised um, at at um, at sale price then they're gonna ask for a price reduction so let's say I'll give you an example let's say we're talking about a million dollar property and they offer 1.1 million you accept their offer once an escrow the home gets appraised but it gets appraised for a million twenty 
So what does that mean? That means that they're gonna fight you on getting that price down from 1.1 that they originally offered to a million twenty thousand. So that right there is one of the ways that a lot of buyers are getting, again, their foot through the door and once in, they wanna do a price reduction. Uh, another thing also right now, which is the highest and best is not necessarily the best one because their ability to be able to close. So um, when it comes to loans, it when it comes to their loan, a lot has to do with, um, what do you call it, their debt to income ratio. And if it's really close, if it's really maxed out, then there's a high chance that their loan will not get approved. So even though they've gotten pre-approved, they still have to go, once in escrow, they still have to go through underwriting. So there's a high chance that if their debt to income is higher than let's say 50%, there's a high chance that their loan will not get approved. And that happens during escrow and guess what? Your home will fall out of escrow and guess what? You're gonna have to relist and guess what? That never looks good for the market. Then you go back on the market, people wonder why it fell in escrow in the, why it fell out of escrow in the first place and now they're trying to lowball you. So again, sellers out there, highest offer isn't necessarily the best offer. Just keep that in mind. If you are in a situation where you're looking to sell or you're in the market and you've just received a ton of offers, shoot them over to me. Like I'm happy to, to give you an opinion on it even though I'm not your, your realtor or you're not working with me or you're somewhere out of state. I'm more than happy to uh, give you my opinion. You know, just someone else that you can lean on and I'm always here to help. So keep that in mind next time you are selling or thinking about selling or reviewing offers highest and best isn't always the best offer the highest offer isn't always the best offer just remember that keep that in mind so on a side note one thing i forgot to mention about uh, the highest and best offer is that many of them are waiving appraisal contingencies so they'll give the highest offer and at the same time waiving appraisal contingency. Now you have to be careful as a seller with that because you also have to verify that if for any reason um, the house does not appraise, they have the, the funds and the savings in their bank account to be able to bridge the gap from the sales price to the appraisal uh, price that comes in. So I'll give you an example. If there's a home, 900,000, and you offered 980 and the appraisal comes in at 920 then um, then you have to be able to bridge the gap from 920 to 980 and that has to come out of pocket that is not involving the loan or anything like that so that just as a side note something to uh to look out for back to coronado um so those were the the, the reasons why one uh, they're just trying to get the offer accepted and then once an escrow they're going to lower the the, the uh they're going to offer less or they're gonna find a way to for you to cut down on the uh, on the sales price. One through appraisal, two through inspection, and three because of their loan. It just won't get approved. So, anyways, um, let's keep walking out here in Cornell. Let me see if I can spot some some cool homes out here for you guys to see. If you know me, if you know my vlog, I'm a big car guy. And that's one of my favorite cars of all time, the G-Wagon. But I guess, in this case, priorities, right? Gotta have a nice car before you have a nice home. I don't know. I think it's vice versa. I think you should have a nice home. And then you can have a nice car to park in there. But still, you're right in front of the, um, front of the golf course. You have tennis courts here as well. These are all open to the public. And then you have Far away there you see those are what we called here the taco towers so interesting interesting story about those taco taco towers the reason they're called taco towers is because i want to say like 95 percent of the people who live in those towers are mexicans so we named them the taco towers they're actually called coronado case um, the story behind them, which I didn't know this, I just found this out, and my dad told me this story, which I don't know if it's true, if you know it, and maybe if I'm wrong, comment down below, but um, I'm just walking by this house, which is for sale. It is for sale. Um, anyways, if you know the story about the Taco Towers, 
what my dad told me was apparently they were giving to they were given to a Mexican who did a deal with some politicians here in um, in San Diego and specifically in Coronado. This is many many years ago, and they weren't given the town hotels weren't given to him. And actually, the piece of land where they stand were given to him, and um, the, he decided to basically build these towers. Obviously, they were built by a Mexican because they. They look like they belong in Mexico City. Honestly, Coronado is one of the most beautiful places here in San Diego, and probably the world, in my opinion, to live in, lifestyle-wise. Um, but uh, but yeah, these are they're big, and the rumor is that he pre-sold them to all of his friends in Mexico City. So this Mexican was given this land here in Coronado. He builds these towers. He basically pre-sells them to all of his friends in Mexico, and that's how they're named the Taco Towers of Coronado. If you walk up, we're walking right now around the island. Again, Coronado's an island, super nice, but we're walking around the island, and um, all around the island, I wanna say it's like six miles, six, five or six miles to walk like completely around the island. Um, no uphills, so that's good. Maybe a little bit, we're going up a hill right now. But it's super nice, like, it, like I said, you get a beach, you get golf courses, you get Hotel Dell, you get small little restaurants, you get nice little cafes. And Coronado, as of lately, has been really pushing for a um, more of the restaurant scene. They opened up a really nice restaurant called The Henry. Uh, really, really good. And that brought, in, that brought in a lot more people and a lot more, um, I guess, clients, visitors, tourist because after that then they opened up Buena Forqueta, an, an Italian restaurant, then they opened up the Paraki Cafe, and then they opened up the Clayton's Cafe which is really good. All these places serve breakfast, uh, lunch, and some of them serve dinner. Um, going up a hill here. Ooh, I-8 spotted. Not a fan of the I-8 but I know many people are. Not a fan. I'm not a fan of um, of electric cars in general. But you actually get to see some pretty cool cars out here in uh, in Coronado. There's uh, you get to see a lot of classic, nice looking cars, uh, iron cars, and guess what? You also get to see a lot of. You get to see a lot of golf carts because golf carts are allowed on the island. And so some people like that house have really, really cool golf carts. So you'll see them riding around, especially on the weekends. Hard to find parking here because of tourists, especially in the summer. Summer is just, gets packed with tourists, but it's nice having a golf cart because you could just go around the town and park anywhere. So let's keep walking. If I see anything else cool, a cool car, a cool house, I'll hit the record button for you guys. Let's go. You gonna have school today? No. Why not? It's Labor Day. La it's Labor Day? Or Veterans Day. Yeah. Veterans Day again. Veterans Day. Do you know what Veterans Day is? No. Do you know what happens in Veterans Day? Um, huh? We commemorate the people who have served in war. That's right. So who are the veterans? Who? Name the four branches of the military. Yeah, name them. Four branches of the military. military. Go. Go. Right now. Name them. Air Force, Navy, the SEALs. Uh, what are the SEALs though? Navy SEALs. Navy, okay. What else? Uh, Where are you going? Better. What are the ship? Huh? Like the ship? Like the one like the... So you got, you already named Navy. Who else? Come on now. Air Force. Air Force. Okay, Navy, Air Force. Who else? I don't know. That's it. I know there's four. You didn't go to school today because we're honoring the veterans. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Who are we honoring? We got Navy. You got the water ones. Like the ones we on got boat. Air Force. The ones on boat. That's the Navy. Who else? The Navy is it? The ones on boat. That's Navy. Is it? Yeah. Oh. And um... I don't know. Okay, okay, yeah. Yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Is that a knife? <laughs> that is a knife. Is that a sharp one too? Which ones? Hey, 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 no peeking, no looking. <laughs> I don't know. You already said Navy, Air Force, come on now. Who's the biggest one? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. I thought the Navy, uh, the Navy SEALs were like... 
Who else? I know it's like Come on, it's the army? Oh, the army. Come on. What else? And the Marines. Oh, the Marines, yeah. It's Marines, Army, Navy, and Air Force. You know, you think the Marines are the water ones, right? right? Yeah, maybe. So but that's no. why I was confused, but that's why I wasn't guessing. All right. Time to hit the gym. Let me turn on the light. Ay. Good vibes only. It's a vlog. Vlogs are back. We're gonna hit the gym today. We got shoulders. We're working the shoulders today. Yes. And um, there's not a lot of stuff going on when it comes to real estate. I'm working from home. The office is closed today, so um, time to hit the gym. We just came back from a walk from Coronado. You guys got to see Coronado. We had breakfast at Parakeet Cafe. We met up with a friend of mine there for a walk and his dog. And now it's time to work out and then we'll get some emails out to uh, the clients and hit up the, uh, the real estate world, answer some yeah. emails and stuff like that. A lot of stuff going on when it comes to real estate right now, but just today it's a little bit slower because everything is closed, the banks are closed, the office is closed, people are, you know, having their day off, which is a good time to always reach out to them because that means they're not busy. So anyways, for now, they're workout in. let's go! So that was it guys, that's the uh, that's the vlog for today. Took you guys to Coronado, brought you guys with me to the gym, told you why the highest offer isn't necessarily the best one. And if you have any questions about that, please drop a comment down below. I'd love to uh, get to hear your, your feedback. If you like this video, hit the like, hit the subscribe button. I really appreciate it. It helped me out a lot with uh, the YouTube algorithm. And uh, let me know what kind of videos, if you enjoyed this one, if you didn't like it, if you want to see more car videos. And uh, anyways, uh, thanks for watching another vlog and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.